It's always cool when we find out new stuff, like really new data pointing to multivitamins. And I've thought for years, like, are they really worth the hype? Like if I go to Costco or I go somewhere and I see like a Centrum Silver or something, the first thing that pops in my head is, oh my gosh, like I don't need that. The only people that need that are people that are, uh, have poor diets. Well, shoot, I guess a lot of us have poor diets and a lot of our food might not be getting us what we need. And it's interesting is now we look at this newer study and it starts just unraveling all this stuff about multivitamins. And for the longest time, like I was hard opposed to multivitamins, but maybe this will change my opinion. So this first study was published in Alzheimer and Dementia. It took a look at over 2,200 people over the course of three years. And they gave them lots of different uh, cognitive tests, so a battery of cognitive tests, to ultimately come up with what they called a global cognitive composite. So they were getting a global cognitive scale based upon a multitude of different tests. And what they did in this particular study is they gave subjects either cocoa or a placebo or a multivitamin versus placebo because they wanted to see cocoa is supposed to be good for the brain. Is it going to have an impact? They found that there was no change in global cognitive scores with cocoa compared to placebo. But the multivitamin had a huge improvement over placebo on cognitive scores. And this isn't any like small scale test. This is large data with a battery of different cognitive tests. And there were huge, huge chunks of improvement. Now, what was really wild was they saw even more improvement in those that had cardiovascular disease or cardiovascular disease risk. What does this mean? Well, we have to unpack this a little bit, but it actually helps us understand things more. As we get older, we obviously get more deficient in vitamins, like maybe our calorie intake shrinks, maybe we eat poorer, whatever. But we've also noticed that we end up having more deficiencies with cardiovascular disease. And there was a study that was published in the Journal of Molecular Sciences that broke this down quite well. So with aging and also with heart failure, you end up having a higher risk of vitamin D deficiency. So that's a big one. Vitamin D could be like the big elephant in the room here that we need to address and it just so happens to get solved with a multivitamin. But if you unpack it more, you also see that there are significant deficiencies in vitamin B, vitamin C, zinc, and selenium, which are all pivotal when it comes down to neurotransmitter formation but also, of course, associated with cardiovascular disease risk. So when you have low amounts of these vitamins, we see an increase in cardiovascular disease risk. But is that a cause, or is it just the fact that maybe people that have cardiovascular disease have bad diets, so they are having a diet that is devoid of these nutrients? Whatever the case may be, having a multivitamin seemed to at least solve the deficiency which seem to improve their cognitive function. It's kind of wild. We don't know what the actual cause is, but it's doing something good. And nothing bad can really come from at least having nutrient or sufficient nutrients and not being deficient anymore. But let's look at a study that looks at a slightly shorter test period uh, so that we have more data, because that was a three-year study. This was a 16-week study where they gave subjects a multivitamin or placebo but then they actually electrically mapped their brain. So they were watching their brain activity, which is super, super cool. And they found that the multivitamin improved how their brain functioned. Now, specifically what they found is that the multivitamin affected their delayed steady state evoked potential latency. Now, what that means in very simple English is that the brain, when it is asked to do a task, you want the regions of the brain that are associated with that task to be on, but you want other regions to turn off. So if you have inhibitory effects where the rest of the brain turns off and you can be focused, that's good. So that's essentially what happened. They found the brain just worked better when there was a multivitamin in place. Now, why? Now, if they start looking at the data, they say, okay, yeah, we look at their diet, we see they were deficient, but the biggest deficiency seemed to be vitamin B12 in this case. Now, vitamin B12 is important for a lot of things in the brain, obviously for oxygen, but it's also important for neurotransmission. It's very, very important overall. Now, longer term, it's important for clearing out homocysteine too. So short term, it helps our brain actually function. Longer term, it clears out homocysteine during a methylation process where it actually takes homocysteine, breaks it down into methionine so it can be excreted. High levels of homocysteine are associated with cognitive dysfunction and impairment. So we have two things that are kind of working here. So real quick, the ways that you increase vitamin B12, you're gonna increase like beef, chicken, eggs, liver. 
you're really looking at meat as far as non-meat sources. Tempeh is halfway decent with it. Uh, nori, like seaweed is halfway decent, but really like the eggs and the liver and the beef, that's what's gonna really get you the B12. But there was a cool study published in Frontiers in Nutrition that demonstrated that if you had a diverse microbiome and your gut biome was healthy, that the communities in your gut could actually produce vitamin B12. Now, the issue we run into here is if you're eating a diverse enough diet to have your microbiome produce vitamin B12, then you're probably getting vitamin B12 from your diet to begin with. However, it's still important to note, especially if you don't eat a lot of meat or you're trying to kind of find other ways to get B12, because clearly it's important for the brain. I also put a link down below for seed, which is a probiotic that I recommend. I don't usually recommend probiotics to most people because I think you should do the most with your diet. But if you are trying to sort of help seed your gut a little bit more and get more of that gut bacteria, I definitely recommend them because they're unlike other probiotic brands. First of all, they are very science forward and they fund a lot of scientific research, but that's also a 25% off discount link. And their technology is really cool. You see that there's a capsule inside of a capsule, so you get proper colonization. Normally, if you take a probiotic, it's all just destroyed for the most part in your gut before it even gets into the intestinal tract. So very unique formulation there. And again, that's 25% off your entire order for their daily symbiotic. So that's the, what you take daily. So prebiotic and a probiotic. Let's talk newer data on mood and anxiety too, because this is really fascinating stuff. A study published in Human Psychopharmacology. Okay, this was in older populations. What they found is that when they were given a multivitamin compared to placebo, there were improvements in depressive and anxiety scores. So overall, that improved. At the same time, they had increases in cognitive function. And then if we look at another paper, this was in younger populations published in psychopharmacology. This was interesting because they found the same results. It wasn't just an older population thing. So then it begs the question, we say, okay, earlier in this video we established that older populations are usually more deficient in nutrients. But now we're understanding that younger populations are getting the same benefit when adding this multivitamin in. So with this, they analyzed their diets and they found that whether old or young, their diets were lacking. So those that were having the most cognitive improvement had diets that were like missing out on a lot of these nutrients. Now with the mood and anxiety part, I can't help but wonder if it might all be vitamin D related. Because what's really wild is that the strongest deficiency as far as mood and anxiety and depression is concerned really is with vitamin D. There's a study a while back in the British Journal of Psychiatry that was like a cohort, looked at like three cohort studies, 10 randomized studies, it was like 31,000 people and they found that like the strongest correlation between depression, anxiety, and low levels of vitamin D. And I can't just ignore that data, although it's observational. When you understand the mechanisms, it makes some sense. So we have vitamin D receptors in the regions of our brain that are associated with anxiety and depression. And it's almost as though when we don't have vitamin D to bind to those that we run into this issue. Now additionally, we have glucocorticoid receptors in the hippocampal region, and there seems to be vitamin D influence on those. And what that means is that when that interaction with those glucocorticoid receptors in the hippocampal region uh, happens, you have this neurodegeneration. So you kind of lose potentially cells, you lose potentially uh, neurotransmission in that region, which could lead to anxiety and depression. What else is starting to come out in the research is that we seem to have vitamin D activity on the genes that express serotonin or promoter genes for serotonin. So that means that vitamin D might actually be required to create serotonin. Now I'm not trying to make this a blanket statement and say that, hey, just go take vitamin D, but I think when it comes down to the mood, the depression piece, when you take a multivitamin, you're getting that vitamin D. So perhaps focusing on the vitamin D first might be a really quick way to kind of deal with that. However, overall, I think the general consensus is that a multivitamin, as long as it's a good one, as long as it's one that doesn't have a bunch of other garbage in it, like I don't recommend Centrum, I recommend getting something that's like wholesome and more whole food oriented multivitamin, it seems to only have an upside. And unless you can really put a lot of work into crafting your diet perfectly, I certainly think that it can only do good, especially if you're staying in a moderate amount. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. We'll see you tomorrow.